For most operas, sound is a very nuts and bolts issue. It is uh, making sure singers can just hear the orchestra on stage. There is n little, if any, reinforcement. Or if it is, it's supposed to be light and very unnoticed. This project is completely different because the sound is the basis for the show. The whole concept of putting the audience on wireless headphones in a public space. That means that I have to create the complete sonic environment for the audience. So we can make, make all of our layers and banks custom as we need them. Martine and I had both seen this kind of technology used for theater and for silent discos and you know, lots of other kind of performances. So it's not, you know, it's not a, a brand new invention necessarily. So we knew it was out there. And um, I had then really worked hard <laughs> for over several months to try and get Sennheiser as our sponsor because I knew Sennheiser's technology in this case was the top of the line and was really um, that they had the, the ability to do this but would also love this new challenge. Well, at first I was like, well, who would, you know, really, we want to do that? But, um... Once we got here and met the production crew and learned about their ideas and the scope of it, um, it, it really made sense on, a, on an artistic level. So now what can we do to really make it work technically? Anytime you're, you're using wireless, it's always a challenge. And being in the middle of Los Angeles, in a very active city where there's a lot of film production going on, uh, we have a lot of broadcasters uh, uh, broadcasting their DTV, their digital transmission over air. Uh, it's a very crowded environment, so we knew uh, right away, okay, in the middle of L.A., we're going to have uh, difficulties finding spectrum. Also, just devising the system just to make it work in that large of a space. We've all been having to sort of like sit around, stare at plans of Union Station and go, okay, how are we going to make this work? And just jotting things down on cocktail napkins and at the bar and then going like, okay, this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to make this work. And we've been talking about this and planning this for a solid year. We're running two antennas to two zones, but we, now we have the opportunity to run two more zones if we need to do the cover, make sure we got both Absolutely. courtyards, we right? We want to run outside if we have to as well. So I think it'll be really good. There's a live music feed. You're going to have a live band in this room that we're here in now uh, that's going to be uh, all microphoned and sending that signal back into the musician. We're going to have about 16 channels of wireless microphones for the talent, for the singers. Uh, and then we'll have six transmitters of a uh, program going back to the singers so they can hear the music, sing in tune to the music. Uh, and then we'll have a couple of transmitters that will do a stereo transmission to 150 or more of the audience members with stereo receiver headsets on. We want them to experience a stereo image like, like you would with any stereo. Um, so the, the engineer will have the ability to do some incredible panning and uh, stereo effects of the production as they're walking around with the actors. So on that side, that's going to be unique as well, because usually in an audience, when you're watching a production, you don't get that stereo image. We, we try to create a stereo image as best we can, but it's not so localized around your head. The sound design is going to be as much of a character in the piece as the music, as the text, as the singers, as the dancers, because we have so much more control over the environment so we can actually do a lot more artistic processing to everything. For example, the opening scene. It starts off Kublai Khan alone in his palace. The text, I believe, is there's a time of emptiness that comes over us at evening. I kind of want it to be in a very cinematic style. 
goes from a very close-up shot to a very wide angle. How can I create that sonically? We hear it bone dry for that first line, with no reverb, no anything. And then slowly, over the course of a minute, it sort of sonically pans out, and this cathedral reverb with a seven second reverb time slowly fades in, and you realize, oh wait, he's all alone in this giant, vast space. Each movement, each scene, is gonna have a different sonic character to that. And how do we achieve that sonic character? Like, using ambient mics or using a lot of fake reverb within our console, that will help us to determine dramaturgically the goal of each individual scene.